Hey guys, and welcome to the Klaus Pixplorer Panel Head Training. So this is just going to be a short tutorial on how to set up and use the Panel Head. So the first thing we're going to do is take the client's image and put it up on the whiteboard using magnets. But the way we place those magnets is actually really important, so you'll want to keep these three things in mind. First off, you'll want the image to be as flat as possible, so wherever you see a bubble or a corner turned up, just put a magnet on it and keep it flat. Second, you want to make sure that the magnets are aligned so that there's as little shadow under them as possible. Because the light is coming from the ceiling, unfortunately there's going to be a shadow cast by the magnet, but you can place it a certain way so that it doesn't have this huge shadow here. You can place it horizontally or vertically so that it casts as small a shadow as possible. You can also use these little circle magnets. Those are good because they don't have any shadow at all. Hardly. Okay. Thirdly, you don't want to place your magnet on a busy spot, like right here on top of New Zealand. I can't see Auckland, right? So you're going to want to put it in the ocean or on the yellow spot where it's easy to Photoshop out. So yeah, you're going to have to do some editing in Photoshop to get these magnets out, but you can make it easy for yourself by using the least amount of magnets possible and putting them in the right spots. The next step is to set up the tripod and put the panel head on top of it. So you're just going to screw it in gently but firmly and then it's going to make a J shape, not an L shape. The J shape tells you that it's in the right position facing the image. And go ahead and make sure that these level indicators, the green circles, are showing you that the bubble's right in the middle of the circle and that's going to tell you that your panel head and your tripod are perfectly flat. We don't want it to be off because then your whole panorama will be off. Okay, so now we can put on the camera. You're going to want it facing upwards and you're going to put that golden screw at the bottom of the camera into the circular hole of the pano head contraption. Um, honestly, it just takes practice. It's really hard at first, but you're just going to slide it in by pulling down and then it's going to latch. You're going to hear a sound and that lets you know that it's secure. Okay, so now we're ready to put on the lens, but we're going to do it in a way that minimizes any dust getting into the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the cap here, just loosen it but leave it on, and then I'm going to take the lens cap off and put that lens into the camera by aligning these two red dots. Line those up, take off the cap with one hand and then put in the lens, and then screw clockwise to the right so that it clicks in. So most likely nobody's touched these settings on the lens, but you'll want to just double check and take a look at these sliders. So you want it to be on AF, not MF, because it's autofocus, not manual focus. And then we want it to be on 3.5 meters. So we're going to turn it on by hitting OK, and then quickly after hitting the right button. And that will activate the panel head so that the lens moves down and faces the image. Now go to your camera, and by sliding this to the right, you can turn it on. Now I'm going to change mine to live view so that you can see what's going on on the screen, but you can use the viewfinder, that's just fine. Go ahead and take the lens cap off. And now we're going to autofocus by half pressing the shutter down. The shutter is the button that you use to take a picture, but when you press it down just slightly, it should try to autofocus. In this case though, it's not quite working and that means that my camera is too close to the image. I need to back up. So I'm going to go ahead and back up, but you don't want to back up too much because you want to be as close to the image as possible while still being able to use autofocus. Okay, we want what's in the viewfinder to be perfectly in the middle of the image. So in this case, it's that cross section. And here we go. I've got it. So I know that I'm right in the center, and that's where you want to be. Okay, now we're going to look at the pano head. And I'm going to change the menu by going to the right. Now I'm on the camera lens menu, and if you look down here, it says F457. That's our focal length, and I want to change that to 400 because our lens is 400 millimeters. If in your case it already says 400, then you're all set. You don't need to do anything. But I'm going to go ahead and change mine by going down, 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 down to the right, 
And now I press OK and the bar is flashing. That means I can change this option. So I'm going to hit down, reduce it to 400. If I hold the button, it goes a little faster, but sometimes it's too fast. So I need to bring it back up. OK, once you're good to go, press OK. And now your bar is solid again. Now I want to go to the next menu, so I'm going to go up, 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 up. Now I'm on the menu option, I go to the right, and now I'm on the next menu. Now this is a menu we're going to be on for a while. So look at this icon here and the one below it. We have a bottom left corner and a top right corner, so I need to set those parameters manually in the panel head. That way the panel head will know where the edges of my image are. So I want to go to this option with the four corners and I'm going to press down to get there and then hit OK to activate that option. Now my bar is flashing, I know I can manipulate that option. So I'm going to go ahead and move the panel to the left and get that bottom left corner of my image. And press OK to pause and then press OK again to start it up again, and now I'm going to go down. And basically, in your viewfinder, you're looking for an image like this. You want to get the bottom left corner of the image with a little bit of buffer space. When you first do this, it takes quite a while to get the corner, but as you get the hang of it, you're going to get used to switching between OK and the directional arrows, and you'll get faster. Um, also note that if you hit the directional arrows multiple times, it'll go faster. Okay, so now we have this image. That's what we want. Now we need to set this as the bottom left corner. So I'm going to press OK, go to the right, and press OK. So now we have our bottom left corner set, and we're going to set the top right corner. So we're going to go back to this icon with the four corners, and we're going to do this again for the top right. So I'm going to make sure my bar is flashing by pressing OK, and then I'm going to go to the right, OK to pause, OK to start again, and then go up, and just keep messing with it until I get this image. Now once I have the image, I can go to the right and down, and now it's on that top right corner option, and I hit OK. And that sets it. I'm going to go up to my menu, go to the right. Those settings are all good. It automatically does everything for us. They're just telling us at what angles it's going to take pictures and how many pictures it's going to take, blah, blah, blah. We're going to go to the right, go to the right until we get this menu. Go ahead and press OK. That saves all the settings we have as a preset number four. And it goes from, I think, zero to 10 or something. There's all kinds of presets, but um, for the most part, you're probably just going to stick to this one. Okay, we're almost ready to start taking pictures. We just need to connect the camera to the panel head electronically. So we need that short curly cord. It should be in the case, and we're just going to attach it like so into the panel head. Now the other end is a little harder to put in. We just need to go to the far side of the camera and peel back this rubber opening and then put the jack into the left side. And now finally we are ready to start taking pictures. So now that we have that cord in, the panel head can communicate to the camera exactly when to take pictures. Now to start shooting, we just press OK. And for the most part, you can just sit back and watch, but you do want to be listening for those shutter clicks. Every time it takes a picture, it makes that sound. Um, but sometimes it will have trouble autofocusing, and so the panel head will rotate, and then it won't take a picture, and it'll just rotate to the next one. If you hear that missed shutter click, you need to press OK to pause, and then hit left to go back to the previous position, and then you might need to take a picture manually. You want to make sure there are no holes in your panorama because it's going to be a nightmare later on. And you'll just have to redo everything. So make sure you're listening for those clicks. Okay, I'm just going to speed through this. Once it's done, it's just going to make some R2-D2 sounds. Okay. 
and then you're gonna detach the camera. So I'm gonna unplug this cord. And I'm going to push on this latch and pull upwards on the camera. It'll just slide right out. And that's it.